Coming up, we'll talk about some cold weather dropping as October is almost here. And a popular business in town closing on October 11th. Next. From the Northwest Public Broadcasting Studios on the campus of Washington State University, this is Murrow News 8. Hello and welcome to Murrow News 8. I'm Jose. And I'm Olivia Mayo. Wear your sweaters this month as daily temperatures will drop by 15 degrees throughout the month from 67 degrees to 52 degrees. Rainfall will increase from one inch daily at the start of the month and will eventually reach two inches by the end. There was a freeze, freeze warning this morning, so keep an eye on your crops. And we'll have more about that weather with Brooke later. Yet another business in Pullman is closing. The batting cages has announced on Facebook that their last day open will be October 11th. The indoor batting practice facility has only been open for a little bit over a year. This is the latest in a string of businesses closure in Pullman. There was an accident Thursday night on State Highway 8 that left two men injured. According to Idaho State Police, a 26-year-old man from Deary hit another vehicle driven by a 33-year-old man from Orofino. The Orofino man crashed off the highway and his vehicle caught fire. He was ejected from the vehicle and was flown to the hospital. The other suffered only minor injuries. If you haven't, make sure to water your lawns today as Monday is the last day you can use your sprinklers in Pullman and Moscow. Due to the water shortage, residents can only water their lawns with sprinklers during the season at specific times. The next time to use your sprinklers is undetermined. Cougar Country has officially put up for sale. Our reporter, Avon Martinez, has more for us. We're not going anywhere. We're not closing. We can do this for another 10 years if we have to. After a couple of decades of owning Cougar Country, Mike and Terry Wagner are ready for retirement. But they remember buying the restaurant like it was yesterday. Well, we moved here in 1976. One of the iconic facets about Poland was this little place called Cougar Country. And we would bring our kids here after swim lessons or after school and get little treats and stuff like that. So when it went out of business in 2019, we approached the owner and worked for many, many, many months and tried to uh, get it. Finally, we worked out a deal and we were ready to purchase it and put uh, it back in business. Terry expresses to us that Cougar Country stands out from the rest. When people walk into Pullman or into Cougar Country, it's like time has stopped. And we also want our customers to be so warmly greeted. Before we bought it, one of the things that shocked me about it was its efficiency. When we walk through it, you can see how efficient this restaurant is. It's extremely efficient. Thank you, Avon. Communication project on Bishop this week starting today. Monday, today uh, is this work is a private communication project by Zipley Fiber on Southeast Bishop B Boulevard. Traffic will be shifted from its current lane, but not metered by flaggers. There may be a brief period where flaggers hold traffic to string overhead wires. This work may take several days to complete. Moscow is bringing back an October favorite. On Saturday, Moscow Chambers of Commerce will host the Moscow Fest. The free event will feature live music as well as beers and brats for a barbarian style evening from 4 to 8 p.m. Flu Shop Fridays are back until November 1st in Butch's Den in the Cub from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. every Friday. The flu is a contagious respiratory disease with symptoms like fever, cough, aches, and fatigue. It can also cause mild to severe illnesses. Up next, the Student Rec Center will be opening up the pool after renovations throughout the year. You'll hear more next. I think I'm hey, 
How you doing? Hey, Mason. Hey, Mason. Got a new house. It's looking pretty cool so far. A place that I call I'm teaching Louise how to cook some lasagna. Thank you. Study, please. I think I finally found a place to make my own. A place that I call home. This place that I call home. Washington State University completes new upgrades to Student Recreational Center today. Upgrades include resurfacing of the pool deck and complete makeover of its mechanical room, and the pool and spa are now back in service. The renovations impact a lot of the key areas within the facility, but the projects were too struggled throughout the summer to lessen the impact of users. The total cost of the projects were just over $4 million. Most of the fundraising or funding for this project came from student fees, non-student memberships, and fees for programs. For a list of major upgrades done to the Student Recreational Center, visit wsu or news.wsu.edu. And you know, now that the pool's open at the rec, probably means we should stay inside rather than swimming outside. Brooke, what's the weather looking like? Yeah, absolutely, Olivia. It definitely was a little chilly this morning when I was outside with that freeze warning, but it has been lifted and I was just outside and it was actually a lot sunnier, felt a lot warmer than it really is. Today we've got a high of 60, a low of 34, just a little breezy, not too bad. And then looking at tomorrow, we've got a high of 70, a low of 36, so just warming up a little bit. It'll be partly cloudy in the morning and then clearing up with highs in the in the lower to mid 70s some south wind and then gusts up to 20 miles per hour later in the afternoon. And then looking at the state map in Olympia, we've got sunny highs in the 60s to lower 70s. Um, north winds 10 miles per hour becoming northeast in the afternoon. Partly cloudy going into the night with lows in the 40s and northeast wind getting up to about 10 miles per hour in the evening. Looking at Seattle, we've got Sunny highs in the 60s, light wind becoming north around 10 miles per hour and partly cloudy in the evening. Looking at Yakima, we've got partly cloudy in the morning, becoming sunny later in the afternoon and some patchy frost in the morning as well. Highs in the lower to mid 60s and some light wind, just a little breezy in the afternoon. And then looking at Tri-Cities, we've got sunny and also patchy frost in the morning there. Highs in the mid to upper 60s, some light wind and just a little bit of breeze. And then looking at our week, going into Wednesday, we've got a high of 64, low of 45, still sunny, some gusts up to 30 miles per hour that day. Thursday, we're looking at a mostly clear day, high, highs in the mid 60s to lower 70s. Friday, it's gonna be sunny, highs in the mid 70s. And Saturday through Monday, we're looking at partly cloudy with highs in the upper 60s to upper 70s. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Brooke. Up next, you'll hear about the Seattle Seahawks game tonight and Cougar Sports. Days, months. Hey, I'm Jim from across the street. Years. I'd like to give you this. A lifetime. We can rush by without realizing what we're missing. We lose some of the best moments. <sighs> Some that may never repeat. Come on. Or detach from people around us. Our loved ones grow used to this pattern. But it doesn't have to be that way. We have a choice to take action. It's never too late to live a full life again. Hear how many of us Vietnam veterans have managed our mental health and reconnected with our families. Visit maketheconnection.net to find out more. Cougar soccer team defeated the San Diego Toreros one to nothing to clinch a win in its inaugural West Coast Conference match on Saturday night. 
Freshman Kendall Campbell scored, a, scored the only goal in the 42nd minute for the Cougs game winner and the second consecutive clean sheet from the WSU back line. The WSU controlled possession from the opening whistle, applying pressure into the defensive third with nearly 70% of the Cougs time in attacking half for the first 45 minutes with eight first half shots. Coach Schulenberger said, quote, the back line has been solid all year. Nadia Cooper has been first class all year. We may not score a lot, but we're hard to score on, and we plan to continue that in conference play moving forward, end quote. Cook Soccer returns next Wednesday in Malibu, California to face number 14 Pepperdine in the first conference road match of the season at 3 p.m. On to volleyball, WSU volleyball middle blocker Brecken Sheck was named the West Coast Conference Freshman Player of the Week Monday morning. Sheck helped the Cougs go 2-0 to start WCC play this weekend with the second highest hitting percentage in the league as she finished as a, as a .576 clip behind a total 22 of 22 kills. She recorded a career high 12 kills and a .625 hitting percentage against San Diego on Sunday which was the highest single match performance in the WCC this weekend. Sheck also added six total blocks to finish the weekend with 25 and a half points, 14 and a half points coming against San Diego and wrapped up the weekend averaging 3.19 points per set. Cougs are back home on Thursday and will host Portland at 7 p.m. And going on to football, on Saturday the Cougs were on the road and took on number 25 Boise State. This was the Broncos first game as a, rec as a ranked team since 2020. Broncos running back Ashton Genty entered the game leading the nation in rushing yards per game with 195.3. On the fifth play from scrimmage, he broke four tackles around the line of scrimmage before outracing the rest of the defense on a 64-yard touchdown run. He would finish the game with 259 yards and four touchdowns. For the Cougs, Matier threw for 327 yards and a pair of touchdowns. And Wayshawn Parker led WSU in rushing yards with 35. None of that was enough, though, as the Broncos defeated the Cougs 45 to 24. Head coach Dickert talked about talked to the media about the loss. A lot of a problem. Yeah, I mean, I'm just in all three phases. You know, that's what I told the team. I mean, no, there's not a single person that can point fingers in there because we just got beaten all three phases. Uh, pretty decisively. I mean, they, they wore on us as the game went, and obviously the pressure from their defense, and then obviously the run game. I mean, two is incredible. I, don't know, I just saw the stats 10 yards of carry. That's what he was coming in. Thought, obviously, you got to hold him to less than that to win a football game. So, tackling was poor, angles at times. I thought our guys had some good efforts, but they out executed us, and we were behind the sticks, and, and some really undisciplined penalties tonight. And we got Monday Night Football tonight as we will see the Seattle Seahawks take on the Detroit Lions. Seahawks are entering the contest with an undefeated 3-0 record, while the Lions enter with a 2-1 record after a win over the Cardinals. Seahawks are the first team since the 1979 Steelers to start a season 3-0 while allowing fewer than 150 passing yards in each game. Let's talk some betting odds. The spread sees the Lions at a minus 3.5. The money line has the Lions at a minus 195 and the Seahawks at a plus 165. The over-under has, has 46 and a half points. Kickoff is today at 515. Thank you, Jose. Next up, we'll talk about Taco Bell special day and the taco deals.